Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom area to discuss tarp management with you a little bit today. Now, I say tarp management, we're going to talk about one single point in tarp management. But what I want to do is, I want to kind of segue into that conversation with a talk about ridge lines and ridge line systems in general. Because, you know, I've shown a few lately. Lots of other guys have shown a few lately on Instagram that I've seen. There's been some scuttlebutt about it on the Facebook pages. And here's the thing, you know, none of them are necessarily better than others. Whatever works for you is what you should use. We teach a certain methodology at the Pathfinder School so that it's easily teachable, so that the knots transfer as you go up through the classes. So you're learning certain knots in the beginning and transferring them up to the intermediate and advanced level as well as during the bushcraft classes. And it's repeatable and easily teachable. That's the reason we use the system that we use. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you use something else, you're wrong. Use whatever works best for you. Just know that when you come here, we're gonna teach you something that may be different than what you use. And it's not because we think it's better, it's because we think it's better teachable. It's better lessons within that ridge line, okay? Now, what I wanna to talk to you about today is, with this whole ridge line thing is, I've got this hammock set up today in more of a bridge type configuration. I'm gonna put a seven foot tarp over top of this, the same tarp I was using out there when I did the camp that are not on the ATV. However, what I wanna to talk to you about today is I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to attach that tarp to your main line or your ridge line, because there's lots of things out there on how to do that. And I've also seen some scuttlebutt about soft shackles. And we teach soft shackles at the basic class as making a couple of those with the leftover paracord that you have when you create your paracord management system, your cordage management system. However, what you can do is you could use soft shackles on your line and use that to connect to your tarp. Not have them already in the tarp, but connect them to loops that are on there that are made into prussic loops, but actually make your prussics soft shackles. So how would you do that? Well, you can do that with paracord, of course, and we're gonna use some orange paracord today so that you can see the contrast to the ridge line. But what I would tell you is that most things that you're going to use as far as sliders go on your line that are going to have to interlock like a, like a prussic would do, you want something that's a smaller diameter cordage than the main line. And if the main line is a kermantle cordage, then you definitely want something smaller in diameter that will bite into that cordage. And what we use for that is number 36 bank line. If you're not familiar with bank line, it is a water line. It's used around the water for nets and things like that. Ours is made by Catahoula Manufacturing Incorporated right here in the U.S. It's just private labeled Pathfinder because we buy so much of that from them, they offer to do that for us. The number 36 is about 320 pound test, and it's actually a rope. So you can break it down into three finer fibers, whereas with paracord, it's a kermantle rope where you have fibers inside. So we're gonna use this in conjunction with that so that we crimp down on that kermantle and we get good drag on the line. However, today, like I said, we're gonna talk about paracord. I brought some orange paracord out here only because I wanna show you how it will work and I want you to see the contrast on the main line. So stay with me and we're gonna get started. Okay, so to my main line, I've got this cord. If I tie that cord into a loop with a couple fisherman's knots, then I have a prussic loop, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave those two tails just hanging and I'm gonna tie a prussic on the line, which means I'm gonna take a bite of the line in the center and I'm gonna come over the top of the line and I'm gonna pull those two tails through one time, come back around the line two times, back around the line three times. And then I'm gonna dress that knot up and that's going to become a prussic hitch on my line. It's not a prussic knot, it's a prussic hitch. Now, this will grab, okay? But it doesn't do as good a job as something that's a smaller diameter would do. However, if you're just stretching out a tarp, how strong does it really have to be, right? If it'll bite, it'll bite. And it does. So with that said, we're going to tie this to the corner of a tarp. But let's do this. Let's put another one on the other side first. Throw our tarp over and connect it. Then I'll come back and connect this side and show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so now I've got two tails hanging down here with two stop knots in them. Pretty simple. I don't have a loop anymore. I've got two tails. Now, instead of having to put a loop through this tarp loop, I'm just going to drop a stop knot through there just like this. And then I'm just gonna take this line that's left over here and I'm gonna put a lark's head in that by folding it up on itself on a bite, just like this. So I have a bite of line right there. I've just folded it up on itself, taken that bite and folded it up on the line 
just like this. And now I have a loop right here. All I'm gonna do is put that knot through that loop, cinch everything down on top. And now what I've essentially done is I've done a soft shackle on the line. And now I can pull that tarp taut and it's not going to come undone. But when I want this thing undone, all I have to do is relieve the pressure off of it and it will come undone very easily, just like a soft shackle would. So instead of putting a soft shackle on the tarp itself, putting a loop here like this, and then tying a soft shackle to this loop, I've eliminated the loop and just put two tails here. And now I'm gonna use these two tails to create the soft shackle. So again, I drop one tail in, I take the other tail, I fold it in half in a bite. I take the loop back down on itself to create an open hole here, a lark's head, and I put that knot through the lark's head just like that and tighten it down on the line. And now when I tighten this up, I've basically created a makeshift soft shackle on the line that I can tighten with and I can attach anything I want to to this soft shackle. It's not gonna come undone. We're not putting a ton of stress on it. We're putting a tarp on it. So we can tighten this thing out as much as you want to and we're not gonna hurt that soft shackle any for sure. And when we need it off, all we gotta do is slack it up. Like I said, take these two tails and kind of work them a little bit and it'll come right undone, boom, just like that. See you later. Happy day, right? Pull this out of the loop going about my merry way. I'm gonna have to put something through the loop anyway, whether it's a loop or whether it's a single string. So this just eliminates a step by not having a soft shackle on this itself. I have the soft shackle on the line itself that I'm connecting to. And that just makes it that much faster and easier to get the job done, okay? And there we go. And so here again, am I saying this is a better system than anybody else's or it's some new grand invention? No, I'm not saying any of that. Soft shackles are nothing new. We've been teaching them at the school for well over two years now as something you do with your excess cords to replace a carabiner with, that you can hang things off your pack. But using that option here gives you a little bit more simplicity on your ridge line, for sure. It eliminates a toggle or picking up a stick, for sure. And it gives you the versatility of having two pieces of cordage hanging down there instead of a loop necessarily, in case you wanted to tie that cordage to something else. So is it gonna work? Yeah. Is it for you? I don't know. That's up to you. You decide. But I probably will take my Prusik loops that I have on my line that are 36 bank line, replace them with just two down lines with stop knots in the end instead of the loops, except for the one I use for tensioning. All right, guys, I appreciate you joining me here today for just another quick video on this Ridgeline system. And it's just another method or another option that you have. It's not necessarily better, not necessarily faster, but it seems to me to be very convenient. And I think you might enjoy it too. So give it a try. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And don't forget to check out all my instructor's channels on YouTube because they all have them. All right, guys. Thanks.